hello a very good morning to all of you so uh, let's start the lecture number three of our computational chemistry course so in this lecture so we are going to uh, define the computable properties that means that what are the properties we can compute using computational chemistry so one more thing is that these properties uh, may not be exactly real or experimental values because uh, we what we are doing we are doing actually solving approximate solutions okay so better we can say that what are the properties we can predict okay so let's uh, see one by one so like uh, the structures or geometry of the molecules you know uh, that the most important <coughs> things to understand about the geometry about the uh, molecules is its structure or how the atoms of the molecules are specially oriented so for example uh, you know that uh, water is uh, actually a bent shaped not linear but carbon dioxide is linear okay in this way we can define that uh, ammonia is uh, pyramidal shaped but not planar whereas the bh3 is planar okay so for simple molecules like water or ammonia or uh, bh3 or carbon dioxide you can uh, easily get the geometry from uh, the simple model like VACPR what we explained in the last lecture but for if you have a very complicated molecules like a very big molecules like proteins and others then you cannot actually get the its proper geometry which one will be so computational chemistry can be a really helpful on that moment okay so next is that uh, when you have uh, so many conformations of particular uh, molecule uh, you know the idea of the conformations it has the uh, same geo, uh, type of atoms connectivity but different uh, spatial orientations okay so uh, computational chemistry can help you to uh, identify that which one uh, which conformer will be more stable like either it's a char form uh, of cyclohexane will be stable or both form of cyclohexanes will be more stable okay so you can uh, determine using computational chemistry that either chair or boat which one is more stable or uh, cis or transform is more stable we, you can define you can define that in the way for benzene that either it is actually more stable is Kekulé structure or dewar structure or uh, it can be like uh, for elanine either it's in this form or in r form or in other cases it's e isomer or z isomer okay so in this all these cases you are actually uh, these are uh, same molecules but they have different special orientations so you can identify that which one will be the more stable orientation of that particular molecule okay so next is that other than this simple uh, organic isomerism which i have expressed here there are so many uh, complicated isomerism like that inorganic uh, or coordination isomers like geometrical isomers optical isomers all can be actually computed using computational chemistry tools okay so uh, both the structures of these forms like a chair form and boat form both can be available uh, but which one is more stable that is the questions okay and how can we determine that which one is more stable and what is its stability okay so to address these questions we have to compute uh, another fundamental properties like the energy of molecules so if we can uh, suppose we can calculate the energy of uh, char and both form of the cyclohexanes then if we found that char form is uh, lower energetic then we can say that this is more stable okay so next uh, let's say what are the properties energy we can calculate that energy is one of the most valuable concepts in chemistry you know that computational chemistry methods actually use to compute the energy of the system which is the most important thing so the system with the lowest energy is considered the most stable species and so we can define the geometry of a molecule which actually implies the lowest energy that is called the geometry of the molecules okay so next uh, 
we can also other than energy we can also calculate the thermodynamic properties like there are so many forms of energy we actually use to define the process for example gibbs free energy entropy heat capacity at constant pressure or at constant volume all these things can be computed okay so these are all things that uh, needs to define a thermodynamic process or a chemical reactions next is mechanism and kinetics of chemical reactions so you know that uh, we are very much interested to uh, know the reactions uh, step by step that how it proceeds okay that is called mechanism and also the energy of activations means that how much energy is required to uh, perform the reactions and also the reaction energy means that either it's exothermic or endothermic so these are all fundamental uh, understanding of chemical reactions which you can compute using computational chemistry or also you can define thermodynamic uh, therm uh, principles like uh, either your product is thermodynamic control product or kinetic control product so all the physical uh, organic chemistry or physical inorganic chemistry concepts can be actually defined by computational chemistry next you can actually model enzymes reactivity this is little bit i have explained so here uh, you know that uh, mainly in the uh, reactions takes place in the enzyme in the active site so we can model this active site uh, using uh, taking only the active site uh, and also we can take the total uh, system is in different way okay so this is the way of modeling enzyme that you will uh, learn about uh, later details and the selectivity selectivity is also very much important in synthetic organic chemistry you know uh, like uh, that is uh, reactions like marconi for anti marconi addition or hydroboration reaction selective oxidation reduction in presence of multi multiple functional groups okay all can be investigated using computational chemistry tool like you can see marconi where bromine will add either it's the in the most typically hindered positions or less typically hindered positions or here it's a given is a double bond so the how the radical will add either it's in the uh, most substituted end or less substituted end or the stability of intermediates like carbocation if you consider either it's a primary carbocation or secondary or tertiary which one is more stable and sometimes your reactions will provide more than one product that is we said major and minor product so you can define also that which one is major and which one is minor like this where uh, it will add the ortho positions or it's the para positions which one will be major next the molecular properties not only the uh, not only the chemical reactions but also several molecular properties can be computed using computational chemistry tools for example uh, symmetry of the molecules you know the uh, symmetry means that uh, how it can be uh, defined using point groups like that and you will learn about that in this semester in your group theory course so after getting the shape corresponds to lowest energy the lowest energy the symmetry of the molecules like what are the symmetry elements like uh, either a rotational symmetry or is a plane of symmetry are present you can understand from uh, you can visualize that from the computational chemistry tools or uh, dipole or multiple moments the absolute value <coughs> and the directions both can be computed and also for a chemical reactions uh, the most important things are bond energies and bond order because you know that chemistry is nothing but the bond breaking and making process so bond energies and bond uh, order informations are very useful to analyze chemical reactions and that you can compute using computational chemistry so atomic and partial charges and electrostatic potentials also you can calculate like to uh, find that uh, a particular atom or center is either nucleophilic or electrophilic you can uh, calculate using uh, the idea of the atomic charges or partial charges and also electrostatic potentials also will be very helpful to uh, find out that either the the molecule is 
hydrophobic or hydrophilic or you can define that which zone is hydrophilic or which zone is hydrophobic okay so next uh, is the molecular orbital so if you solve the schrodinger equation as i said that uh, we can get the energy levels of the molecule which actually uh, as expressed as the molecular orbital and molecular orbitals are actually extremely useful to understand many chemical reactions because actually the electronic transitions happens from one molecular orbital to another molecular orbital uh, or in many reactions like pericyclic reactions you uh, can see that uh, symmetry plays a role so you can understand that which uh, way the reactions will take place by observing the molecular orbital and its symmetry and also you can uh, compute so many uh, spectroscopic uh, parameters like uh, our spectroscopic uh, data using computational chemistry for example uv visible ir ramon nmr epr mosbier etc okay so molecules this uh, can be predicted using computational chemistry tools and also you can visualize the specific vibrational mode for example let's consider water and you know that it has three uh, vibrational mode like uh, uh, bending like bending vibrations or like anti-symmetric stretching or stretching So all of this uh, you can visualize, you can calculate. Okay. So let's uh, you can see that how they are actually taking place. So basically, in experiment you cannot uh, see such in such a way, but in computational chemistry you can see that exact mode for the frequency. And also you can calculate the UV visible spectroscopy like you can explain the red shift or blue shift in presence of different solvent, metal ion or etc. So in this figure you can see that uh, this L is only uh, uh, spectrum UV visible plots for a ligand but when it's bind with uh, uh, metal zinc we get a red shift. You can see that peak is uh, moving from 300 to 350. Okay. So, uh, geometry and symmetry of the excited state can also be predicted using computational chemistry methods. And finally, all these properties now, they have a central relationship with some concepts and that is called potential energy surface that we will discuss in our next lecture. Okay. So, next lecture we will uh, actually discuss the links of these most of these properties. Okay, so thank you very much for listening.